This is the Bamboo Lab A1 with the AMS Lite. I've had the opportunity over the last month or so to test this out after Bamboo Lab sent it to me. And just to start off, I really do think that this is probably the best buy you can buy at this price range. It is superior to a lot of different 3D printers that are on the market currently. In today's video, I wanna tell you about why. I like this printer for a number of reasons, specifically the price, specifically what it offers at that price, and specifically the ease of use. We'll go over all of that in great detail in today's video, and I'll also be comparing it to a bunch of other printers that I have, specifically the Anchor Make models that are very similar in price range and build quality and features. Now, a couple of reasons why I like Bamboo, specifically because of the user interface. Now, Anchor Make did a pretty phenomenal job um, when integrating kind of wireless printing, a lot of different features. And I would say that the Bamboo Lab A1, specifically for that $550 price range, is very similar to the Anchor Make M5 in what features it offers. However, the M5 is priced a good couple hundred dollars more. Also, the M5 has an absent color module, as in at the time of this video, I was promised almost a year ago to have a color module delivered in my door within a week, um, and n that never happened. Um, I just will real quick point out that working with Anchor Make has been pretty horrible, and working with Bamboo Lab is like insanely enjoyable. Um, I enjoy working with them. It, it does feel like Anchor Make actually proactively um, is out to screw you over um, when working with them. The user interface on the A1 is pretty phenomenal. You've got a little screen. It's a little refresh rate and you can tell pretty quickly. However, using the slicer, the slicer is a great tool. Um, it works really nicely. You have the ability to set colors. The user interface, specifically the autonomous and automatic switching of filaments, while you do have a waste and a purge tower, etc., you're really going to find quickly that that's just very nice. Specifically at this price range, it, was, it wasn't something that you saw a lot of. You have the X1 Carbon that was very established. Um, Anchor Make, their color module is supposed to have multiple nozzles and a whole nozzle system. Yet to see it. That is a great and cool and all, but that also is going to be another $600. So in total with an M5 and a color module, you're looking at easily $1,200. The A1 is here and it's with the AMS Lite, it's $550. I really struggle with, you know, with the camera built in, with the automatic, you know, error or printing error detection. It's just, it's such a much more convenient user interface. It's such a much more convenient option. And we'll talk a little bit about that price valuation in a sec. The print speed is now, I want to say the industry standard of about that maximum speed of 500 millimeters per second. The X1 Carbon has it. The Anchor Make has it. The Anchor Make M5C has it, and now the A1 has it as well. However, the print speed and print reliability is very reasonable. Now, I don't, maybe I just didn't pay attention to this when I got my X1 Carbon, but it did spend a substantial time calibrating for noise, more so than I was aware of. Maybe the fact that the X1 Carbon was all within the case, you didn't really hear it, but the A1 spends a good bit of time calibrating its motors to reduce the noise. And this really means that you end up with something that's exceptionally more quiet than some of the Anchor Make printers. Uh, the Anchor Make printers, that they just like not bother to do that because you hardly can tell when the A1 is running and when it's going at it. And it's pretty impressive at that. The build quality on the A1 is pretty solid. Um, it does choose to go for some plastic elements in places that traditionally other companies have not. Anchor Make did not have the base being of the base cover being plastic. They had it all machined aluminum. However, I personally can't complain. Why? Because the things that you're touching, yes, there's a good bit of plastic in here. It's not cheap plastic, if that's the right way to say it. It's sturdy, well-designed, etc. But I'd rather have plastic elements over machined aluminum if it meant that I got more features and it was more reliable and more usable. Like, think about that for a sec. I'd really prefer more features and a better overall experience over metal here and there. Now they did choose to go for the DJI Gray, and the reason why I say DJI is because the founders of Bamboo Lab were DJI employees. Now compared to the M5 from Anchor Make, the A1 has a color module. You can print colors now, today. I feel like the one from Anchor Make is never going to arrive, and when it was announced it was a cool thing, but now, however, almost a year later, 
uh, it's starting to become questionable if it's ever going to get here. I, I think it's a different conversation to have if you're if you have something here today, like Bamboo Labs has this here today. You can buy it, and I for the price tag that you're getting both at, it's not really competition. Even if they put out the color module tomorrow, it's a six hundred dollar color module, and the cheapest printer that you can get that's compatible with it is the Anchor Make M5C. That's still a thousand dollars total. And the, and the Bamboo Lab system costs $550 today. The ability for all of the printing to be calibrated to each roll, specifically the AMS light, auto detect what roll is on there and calibrate that. It's been hard to switch back to different filament. It really has. I've tried printing with filament that I have from other printers. It's just a really hard sell with all of the tweaking and calibration that it takes versus just printing out of the box with the bamboo lab filament. And when it comes to actually printing, specifically since I've had my X1 carbon, I've just chosen to go with the bamboo lab printer. Now, the A1 is very similar. It's just as reliable. I do have some issues with the bed. Sometimes it doesn't stick as well and has a little bit of curling on the edges, but for the most part, it is very reliable, very consistent, and I would much rather prefer to print with a Bamboo Lab printer than an Anchor Make, any of my other printers, or any of the Creality printers that I've had. Bridging, you'll find that this printer will turn on its fan, and it does very adequate bridging. You'll notice that if you have a lot of bridges, it will sound like a fan spooling up and spooling down a lot. I would have preferred just like the fan to stay at the same amount, but I understand it does its best to cut the noise. Now for the print quality on these printers, I will be comparing it directly to the X1 Carbon. Why? Because it's really the only other one with a color module that I have to test with. The A1 does have a little bit of waving in the prints compared to the X1 Carbon. The Anchor Make printers have the exact same problem. The waving, and it's sometimes it's a little bit of quality issues, but for the most part, I would say the printers print nearly identical. You're going to, of course, get maybe a 10, 20% better improvement in the edge cases, like specifically the very weird edge cases where you're printing really fast, etc. The X1 Carbon is going to be better. Now, I would like to talk about the bed adhesion issues a little bit more in depth. I have found with the X1 Carbon that the bed adhesion sometimes has issues. Mostly, it's when it's not properly cleaned. It's got some grease on there. Usually it's my own fault. There's been some times recently as the bed's gotten a little bit more used that it's had some issues sticking. Maybe the calibration's off. Now when it comes to the A1, usually it's the same thing. Specifically in long edges. Uh, this is a little adapter I made for a camera piece. The sharp edges here, um, actually one of these started curling up. Sharp edges like here, for example, those are the kinds of things that may have issues, but they're not really prevalent. And it's usually just a good idea to put a skirt on things anyway. And I've noticed it and it's actually caused, if it's not taken into account, it can actually cause some print failures. So it was an interesting edge case. Um, it's not common and it's definitely not going to affect the overall quality of the print. So if you're going to print with something at sharp edges, you should use your skirts but I just didn't seem to notice that big of a problem with the X1 Carbon. Um, I just didn't seem to find that as a very common issue. And it's something that I did experience a little bit on the AnchorMate printers as well, but I'm comparing it to a $1,000 printer, right? I'm comparing the A1 to a, you know, the X1 Carbon was a $1,200 printer. So it's really, we're at the point where we're just comparing it to itself, right? It's just something to be aware of, I guess. So should you ultimately buy this? I, I yeah. I know when you see people on YouTube and they always talk about, oh, I got this for free. That's great. No, seriously. I actually said to someone the other day, I was like, if I was getting into 3D printing today, this is what I would buy. When I got into printing, it was, I got a little three axis printer from a company that's long out of business. And the price to like features you're getting is pretty solid. I've actually recommended this printer to multiple people that I've gotten to talk to. Multiple friends that have been interested in buying a 3D printer, this is what I have recommended to them. Over really anything else that's on the market currently, uh, I prefer this given what it's offering. Bamboo Lab has done a phenomenal job on pushing the envelope in 3D printing. They're very likely an industry leader and I fully expect them to continue on 
become even better and better going forward. So it's not a company that I'd be concerned about them going out of business. And it blows me away that it took this long for someone to get so much right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope to see you around on the channel. Goodbye.